Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this new tutorial, I will show you how to create complex PBR material in Blender and bake all the maps so that you can use them in Sketchfab or Marmoset Toolbag as you wish. Uh, from a simple dynamic topology sculpt, we'll learn how to uh, bake all the map properly using cycles and generate uh, all those nice map like uh, diffuse, glossiness, specularity, roughness map, complex normal, etc. And this uh, tutorial will be 100% Blender. No other software will be used. So let's get started. So let's check uh, our document here. We have on the first layer this nice uh, let's say it's nice <laughs> sculpted uh, shield that I have done in dynamic topology and then I have used the decimate modifier which is available here to reduce the uh, poly count the number of vertices because it was very heavy and the file is uh, also is still very heavy because we are close to 300 megabytes so i've just sculpted the front area okay we don't care about the bottom one because uh for the sake of this tutorial uh, i didn't take the time to to go that further and then on the second layer i have a retopod shield so if i activate here the wire or go into edit mode you can see that it's a, a mid poly model with a, a pretty decent topology and the cool thing is that it's already unwrapped and i've made sure that uh, the maps were not too stretch here we have the bottom part which is really really small because again we don't really care about this side okay so if I activate both element, I can see that my uh, retopode model currently match um, the sculpt. So basically here I'm using a matcap to have uh, this nice shading. I will just remove it. I keep the ambient occlusion because it's uh, uh, pretty appealing. We will bake our different maps, a normal map, an ambient occlusion, and um, a dirty uh, map or cavity map. You can call it as you wish. So the first thing to do is, I will remove the wire here, is to make your shading smooth here. It's important because it will influence the way the maps are baked and I will make sure I do know that it's already the case but make sure that your uh, shield your uh, eye poly model sculpted model is also in smooth shading now I will activate those two layers and what I need to bake a map is to create a material so on the first shield here the retopo one we will add a new material that we will call Baker. And we do need uh, an empty uh, picture that will serve as a target for the baking. So let's go into the UV image editor. We will make a 2K picture. So let's call it Baker and make it 2048 by 2048. We can use the UV grid just so I can show you how the, the UV map worked and I will press F3 or go into image, save image, create a folder and call it shield maps and I will keep it in PNG in RGBA, I don't really care for the time being and now We'll go into the node editor. By default, we have this diffuse material and uh, the output. We will add a texture image texture. And here we will select our baker. Now, when I go into the 3D viewport and I press Alt Z and it switches the, um, 
the viewport uh, mode to textured, I can see my texture apply. So you can see that we don't have that much distortion and um, the checkboard is pretty even. But on the bottom here, where we don't really care, I've made it really small so that we don't uh, give it uh, a good pixel density, uh, a, a great number of pixels per faces here. So when you want to bake a texture, if you have multiple, if you already have shaded your, your model and have multiple texture, the only thing you have to do is to make sure that the current target node is activated. So here, when I click the diffuse, this one is activated. Now this one is activated. And now I click this one. Okay, so I will do another thing to make it clearer. I will create a temporary um, texture and set it to a low uh, value and keep the UV grid here. I will switch here to 3D view, get back to the node editor, duplicate this and load this temporary image and switch to texture here. And you can see here when this one is selected, it's activated in the viewport. And if I select this one now, this one is activated. For the baking, it's exactly the same. If I select this one, when I will start baking, it will be ba it will bake on this picture. So let's get rid of it. Let's select this one, make sure it's activated. Get back to the 3D view here. And here we'll keep the outliner. I've set the outliner to visible layers so that I'm not polluted by the other uh, meshes that are uh, on the document or by the camera and stuff like this. And I will activate our sculpt. Okay. So now let's get to the baking option. The first thing we will uh, bake is the normal map. So we'll be using cycles here. And that's uh, one of the case of this tutorial because uh, baking uh, maps with uh, Blender internal is kind of simpler, but I think cycles uh, give a better output. The normal map will be more contrasted and you will be able to um, export better map. I think it's a, it's a personal feeling and I prefer to use cycles. So let's check our baking option. So the baking option are in the render option here. So I'm using the GPU computing in supported mode. You can use the CPU if you don't have a, a powerful GPU. It's just a matter of speed. Here in the dimension, we don't care because the dimension will be set by the map we have created before. So we don't need to get into this. The sampling are important for certain maps like the AO. For the normal map, I don't think it uses the sampling, but it uses the sampling for all this kind of map, like the subsurface, the transmission, the glossy, etc. For the emission, you don't need to have a high level of samples and we will use this to, to cheat in a way. And I think for the normal map also, it's not needed. So let's switch this to five. And if we have bad results, we will increase it to 500. 500, I think it's uh, a really decent uh, sampling level. So we will use the tangent space. We won't change those value. A margin of 12, the margin is the way the, um, the baked map will bleed outside of your model here. So it means that when Blender will create this map, uh, the map will bleed 12 pixels out of the UV boundaries here. We will clear, uh, keep uh, this option set. It means that when we will launch uh, the, the baking, Blender will erase the current uh, map. So the checkboard here will be totally erased and uh, Blender will start, will start, um, will start uh, baking. So let's 
select the shield sculpt first and then the shield and we will use select to active whenever you bake a model with a multi-resolution modifier you don't need to activate this but here the case is to uh, bake a dynamic topology model onto a low or mid poly model so let's bake it this way and let's see how it looks so our map is now baked we have here a message saying that the map has been saved to the internal image so we can see it here but it's currently not saved to our hard drive okay but when I have a look at it here, I can see that there are a lot of bugs, a lot of geometry missing here. Uh, those green area are not good for me. Here are, I have big holes on my nails. Uh, the center part here is showing the wood area while uh, I wanted to bake the, the IO surface. And here also I have holes. So let's check what happened. I will open here a 3D view. It seems that the normal map baked correctly on the areas where my low poly model is higher than or is covering the dynamic topology model while in the creases, so like this area here, I can see my uh, high poly model that is upon the surface it doesn't look nice at all. So we can figure that when Blender is baking those normals, it casts ray inwards. So let's see if we have any options that could help us to fix this. And we'll currently have, don't worry. Here I have this cage option that we will see uh, just after, but I have this ray distance. And when I go over heat, I see distance to use for the inward ray cast when using selected to active. Okay, what does it mean? It means that Blender uh, will use a ray distance. It will cast rays to make sure that when it bakes the map, it uh, calculates a, a distance from the base mesh surface to the sculpted one that is enough to catch all the detail. So now, how can we set this? It's pretty simple. What I do is that here in the end panel, I go to mesh display and I select normals. And it allow me to see uh, this uh, very distance. So here it's way too big. Let's reduce it. And judging by the length of those normal segments, I can set it to 0 0.06 because I have already <laughs> tested it and this should be working fine because I can see all my normals pointing out even on those area here so I can figure that it might be a little short but that's the that's the, the first day so let's set it to 0 0.06 let's check our UV map here. So it does uh, look bad as before. Let's select first the shield sculpt and then the shield here in the outliner. Keep it at select to active. We have set already the ray distance and click bake again. So now uh, it's incomparable. We can see that the wooden surface is really, really nice here. Our nails are well defined. This surface also worked pretty well. And here uh, I have this little artifact and here another. So maybe I have to uh, kind of walk on this ray distance, but it's way better. And under this uh, ray distance here, we have this cage option. And this is the second method to make it better. So this first one, is kind of a fast one. If you are on a simple model without uh, a geometry that is too complex, meaning that there are a lot of, of changing in the geometry, uh, like 
increases and bounces and stuff like this uh, using this method will be uh, enough to get a nice result but if you have a more complex model using the cage uh, will be a better way